I've debated doing this when I was pinned down by a sniper in Afghanistan, taking my helmet off. If that's your last resort and all you're trying to do is locate a sniper's position, but there's no way that enemy sniper would have hit that though. My name's Nicholas Irving. I'm a former U.S. Army Ranger Special Operations Sniper. I'm also known as the Reaper for my 33 confirmed kills in Afghanistan. Today I'm back again to look at some more sniper scenes from TV and film and judge how real they are. I may have a shot. Absolutely not. She's offhand, like there's no support. It's all muscling it in to uh, make that shot. And that gun, oh, well, yeah, that's, no. The Olympic arms, K-23B is what it is. That weapon is like literally accurate for, you know, up to like 50 meters. That distance looks like it's about, at most, a couple of hundred yards. Put it back in the case and go back and get a different one. It's not clean. Repeat, I do not have a clean shot. Yeah, I don't think she had a clean shot at all. In the military, a clean shot would be, um, you're not gonna wound or injure or kill something you don't intend to. If her target is one of those two men, that bullet, you know, it's a 5.56, five, it's gonna zip right through the bad guy and potentially wound or kill the guy she's trying to, to help out or save. I say take the shot, but can't, I mean it on. Take the bloody shot. If I was forced to take the shot, I'll pull the trigger, but I'm not gonna guarantee you anything. Luckily, the train does kind of like come towards her as opposed to moving left to right. That takes out so much more of the mathematics behind making a shot. When it's moving closer or away from you, it's all about just aiming above the target or a little bit below the target, as opposed to you know, aiming in front of it and having that individual essentially run into the bullet. I would rate it a one. Like, it's just not happening at all. That little good tactical deep breath pause, you know, before the shot was really good. To be more precise, you essentially have to be calm. And one of the easiest ways to calm your body down or right before a shot is to just take deep breaths and get the blood circulating. I would have got more square behind the, the rifle as opposed to like having my legs off to the side like that. Maybe got down like in a squatting stance or on my knees and kind of put my weight behind the gun. That way when it recoils, it's kind of more of a straight back motion and not this motion. He's gonna pretty much get that just because of his body alignment and the way he's holding the rifle. Yeah, I think it was smart for him to let the vehicle get closer to him. Everybody thinks being a sniper, we want the longest, furthest shots, but ideally you want the closer ones just because it makes your job that much easier. And it, you know, it's almost like 100% guarantee you're gonna hit. But with that, if I'm protecting someone and I shoot the vehicle within, you know, a few yards from him, the guy is still gonna get hit by the moving vehicle. I don't like that the car just did a triple axle like 20 feet from the guy. Like that's not how that works at all. The only moving vehicles that I've shot, I was a machine gunner and I've never once made a car flip over. Normally they just crash into a wall or crash into another parked car, just roll off the side of the road into the desert. I'd give it a six. The only thing that's pulling me back or giving it a less, lesser number is because of the sniper waiting for the car to get closer. I mean, as far as being a highly accurate sniper rifle, concealed as a flute, I don't think so. There's a lot of big things on, on a sniper rifle that makes it accurate, but the barrel is like really important. And most barrels on sniper rifles are fluted and floated. There's like no interference between the barrel and the stock of the gun as to not like interfere with the harmonics when it goes off. That flute looks like one continuously long, long object. It probably is accurate, maybe at the distances that he's shooting at, but I also don't know what caliber he's shooting. But it's Tom Cruise, so it's probably really accurate. I'd give the female sniper the best position. 
whatever she's in, that little room or the designs on the walls, I think that really gives her an advantage. It almost is like shooting out of a loophole. It's like a, a tactic snipers used overseas where you punch a small hole through a wall or something and a sniper would back away from the wall and shoot through that hole to hit an object outside. The guy with the shades on, he's not really in a concealable, concealed position, but I guess he's using his attire to make him least stand out. Worst position, I'd have to say Tom Cruise. Any sniper rifle can be suppressed, even up to like 50 caliber uh, sniper rifles. You're still gonna hear like a noise. It sounds like a, a clap, a loud clap, or if you took a ruler and, and smacked it on a desk, unless you use like subsonic rounds, which he may be using in this instance where I could see nobody else would really hear anything. <laughs> Shooting lights are actually extremely hard to do. Like, that was one of our things overseas sometimes. When an assault team is going up on a building, they want the light shot out for them to make it dark. And that's, it's actually pretty tough because it blurs out everything and it's hard to find exactly, I guess, where the middle is at. So I'll give it a five. Those shots are, po are, you know, possible, but I don't think that this scenario setup is that realistic. I grew up watching this movie. It's like one of the reasons why I wanted to become a sniper. Every sniper, you have your rifle and you have your ghillie suit. What it essentially does is break up the outline of the human body and mimics or makes you appear to be brush or foliage. But it's not just the ghillie suit that's what makes you camouflage. What you're gonna really wanna do is put a bunch of natural vegetation into the ghillie suit so you look more like the natural surrounding as opposed to just this big pile of, of ghillie suit. Five on the legs. You have the spotter and you have the sniper. The spotter is the one who's not pulling the trigger and he's holding up a, or using a spotting scope. Um, through his, it looked like a red dot camera thing or something like that. And that's just not what it looks like. Either you're gonna have a reticle that mimics or is similar to what the sniper's using. These mill dots or uh, radian lines that are gonna you know, give you your distance and be able to track where the bullet impacts. He's moving. Six five zero, range me. Being a sniper, it, it's like 80 to 90 percent of your job is a, is observation. It's actually really rare that a sniper does get a chance to pull the trigger. Most of our stuff is just relaying information, watching stuff, taking pictures, and telling the commanders what's going on on the ground. So you can be out there for as long as the job needs. I think everything he did there was just fine. Looks like he's using like an M24 sniper rifle, could be, or something similar to that, a variant. But um, like they're good out to like 800 meters and 650 yards, like that's not, that's far, but it's not that far for like a sniper. And a body shot, which is what I normally aim for, was perfect. Like that's all you're gonna go for at that distance. My only issue would probably have something soft underneath his, uh, his rifle, maybe put down a pack or his backpack or something, you know, to, to rest it on. That helps with the harmonics and having the rifle bounce and get all the way from you. I give it a seven. I was gonna give it an eight, but a seven because the sniper scope and the reticles and all that stuff just didn't make any sense. To stay still when you're pinned down by a sniper, it's like almost a death wish. It's just a matter of time before he's going to figure something out to make those bullets impact. Running zigzag patterns, getting out as fast as you can is probably your best bet. To prevent an enemy coming in to do what just happened here, sneak up behind you. In sniper school, they teach you no more than like two shots. Two or three shots, your sniper hide is burnt. Um, you would want to move ideally to a new location. Once you have a good sniper hide set up, the odds of you like getting out after that second shot, third shot, it's, it's, it's slim. But there are countermeasures to deter people from entering that sniper hide. Like for us, we might put up a claymore or some booby traps or something like that behind us. And or even a guy with a machine gun is usually watching our back. That 
actually wasn't too bad. And it's at nighttime with no night vision, so I'll give him that. We hit targets at nighttime, um, but the distances are extremely close. We had a, a, a sniper scope that was mounted with a PVS-14, I believe, uh, which is a night vision attachment that goes on the front of your scope. Bolt guns, bolt rifles, they jam all the time, especially in like dusty conditions. That bolt gun, when you pull it back, it's exposed to the elements. And it's such a slower process as opposed to like a semi-automatic where the bolt is coming back extremely fast. So it's more prone to collect dust and things of that nature that would cause it to, to jam up. Man, this is getting tough. I don't know, I'd give it a six because realistically, Shooting at nighttime like that, I could see you missing that much. I've debated doing this when I was pinned down by a sniper in Afghanistan, taking my helmet off. If that's your last resort and all you're trying to do is locate a sniper's position, I would have probably stuck my helmet up like on a, the tip of my gun and dangled it up as opposed to like throw it. I might need that for later, but there's no way that enemy sniper would have hit that though. Like back in World War II, snipers used to use the trees to hide in and shoot from. And there really is no benefit to hiding in a tree. Once they find you out, all they have to do is, you know, center all their guns onto that tree and chop it down. Hiding underneath the tree are like in the, the hole of the tree where some of them get, you know, hollowed out. I could see that, um, but I'm scared of bugs, so that's not for me. As far as taking the shot when he took it, nine times out of 10, if a sniper's being sent out, it's to overwatch his guys and make sure nothing happens to them. But if we're already engaged in targets and we're already being shot at, then anything that's moving on that opposite end that is a threat or has a weapon is gonna get shot. So yeah, he had every right to, to pop a few rounds off at this guy. I would have too. I'd give it a nine just because I've been in like a, situation where I debated taking my helmet off and using it as a decoy. So I was an on-set uh, tech advisor on this film and also played the dead guy that he got the radio from. Should have won an award for it, best dead guy ever. But that sand was real. Um, we were really like in the desert and it was brutal. It's extremely hard to aim through, we call it a, a brownout, where it's just like a, a semi little, I guess, dust storm that rolls. So you can't see anything. So you definitely, definitely not going to be able to make a shot, especially at the distances that he's going for with that much dust blowing around, obscuring uh, his vision. Give me back much more! Six mils right! I'm not gonna say it's impossible to, to take out an enemy sniper who's hiding among stuff like that. The hardest thing the good sniper is gonna have to do is, is locate them. From what I remember, I recall it being over a thousand meters away, which is extremely, extremely far to be conducting a counter sniper operation. The sound of the rifle that John Cena is firing in the movie is not how it sounds in real life. Like this sounds like a semi-automatic rifle with like a suppressor on it or something like that. In real life, that gun is just a big thunderous boom, a big bang. The way he was shooting in the movie, it, it's kind of like, like it's a semi-automatic as opposed to him cranking the bolt back every time and the sound is off. You yeah, he was dead from the get-go. Like, shooting in an open area um, and a sniper has eyes on you, it's, there's really nothing you can do about it unless you are going to get up and just take a chance and run for it. Just crawling away slowly wouldn't work. He's just going to watch you crawl and decide when to shoot anyway. So it's, it's a lose-lose. This scene here, I don't think I worked that day. So, <laughs> no, I only have so much control, but this scene I would rate like a, oh my, I'm doing this to myself. I'm gonna give it a five. I don't know if I would be comfortable with taking that shot through the, 
the windshield portion of a helicopter. Bullets act funny when they hit objects, and the first object that bullet is gonna hit is that glass, and because it's curved, it's gonna deflect the bullet up or down, left or right. There's really no you know, determining factor on, on, as to where that bullet's gonna land at. So one shot, one kill for that helicopter scene, mm, not so much. From underneath the car, that's actually a good thing to do. I've shot from underneath various vehicles and structures and stuff like that, especially like in an urban environment, you're gonna encounter so much debris and rubble on the battlefield or where you're fighting from. So you have to make do with what you have. The only issue was like her hand placement on the rifle. Like she already has the bipods. I don't see a need to have her hand underneath it, supporting it as well, just extra weight dangling for no reason. I would have probably had my uh, support hand closer or holding the buttstock into my shoulder pocket as opposed to that. During sniper school, we were always told to call in an airstrike when up against another sniper because it's really tough to uh, you know, take out or, or fight against. I believe she's shooting like a 7.62 caliber round, which is well within the, the capabilities of taking out a target at that distance. The odds of it being dead on at whatever range he was would have meant that she would have had to know that distance ahead of time and kind of uh, dial in her scope for that. Instead, she just stuck it on there and pulled the trigger on the head. It's not really like that. But other than that, she, I think she did pretty good. Given the circumstances, I would have probably done the same thing, but I'd give it an eight. She looked really calm behind it. And some of the best snipers I know are female. Ooh. Yeah, so this movie is based off of an actual sniper, uh, Miss Pavlichenko. She was credited with over 309 kills. And as far as putting that bullet through the tank like that, I don't know. I've only aimed at a tank one time and it was by accident. And I was quickly reminded, don't do that again when they pointed the big cannon my way. She went into her bubble. Carlos Hathcock, a Marine Corps sniper, called it getting into his bubble. That's what she's doing when all these mortar shells and, and explosions are going off around her. It's getting into that bubble. Being able to shut that outside world off of the chaos and calming down and ignoring everything to, to pull off a shot, I can relate to that 110%. No, so bullets don't travel in a straight line like that. They travel at an arc, even at 100 yards. So to win that battle, you have to aim higher causing the bullet to go up and hit its apex point and fall back down. All snipers are just like really good NFL quarterbacks. Well, he's throwing it up and they're falling into the target and bullets work the same exact way. Because it was based on a true story, I'll give it a nine, not a 10, just because the bullet trajectory. Females, women make the best snipers out there. No shot. Abandoned selective targeting. All targets are now the distances he's shooting from, like that's very plausible. Here it looks like he's maybe at most 150, 100 yards away, like less than that, because he's shooting down, so less than 50 yards possibly. The scope is not bad either. I'm used to like mill dot scopes and Horus reticles, and they look like busy Christmas trees, some, you know, like without the lights on inside of sniper scopes. But it was a very simple reticle. Shooting in a crowded environment is extremely tough. During the international sniper competition that I attended, that was one of the challenges was to shoot moving targets amongst a crowd. It's extremely hard to do, but our distances were way further than what he appears to be shooting by like a lot. At the angles he was, you know, he was given and the distances, it's not that complicated. Just worrying about where the bullet's gonna hit after you hit your target would be like my only concern because they're in so close proximity to each other, it has a possibility of getting hit too. I would give it a solid eight. Uh, it's highly realistic.
The scopes are always messed up. I don't, I don't understand why they just don't put a real scope reticle in there. So this is an actual spotting scope, similar to what the individual, the, the sniper's using in the movie. And he's using it pretty correctly, like he's using it for target detection to identify where a threat may be. He noticed a little bullet on the ledge of that window and then, you know, finding things that were out of place that didn't make sense and eventually finding where the sniper was to something you see rare in movies, the actual use of target detection and how important it is for a sniper to find the smallest details and things that are out of place to find out, you know, find who they're looking for. What you want to do is be pushed back away from the hole and not put the barrel protruding outside of the hole. It gives your position away and alleviates that whole purpose of why you made that hole in the first place. I'll give it a seven. I love the use of target detection, but he messed up putting the barrel through the hole. My favorite sniper scene of all time would have to be from the movie Lone Survivor. They had their sniper rifle and they were engaging targets in the woods. And that was like the most realistic worst scene I have ever seen in my life. Thanks for watching and if you like this video be sure to aim at one of the videos above and maybe give it a shot or two.